So how good is the Crimson Rune weapon? Let's talk about it. Welcome back to the channel guys, it's Sugar Bear John here. I got a lot of good response from the previous video that I created last week, which was the state of the blood decay in 9.0.5. And I got a lot of good comments, thumbs up, uh, good discussion, um, lots of good feedback, and one of my most popular videos. So I'm going to do a follow-up video today for you guys talking about how good the Crimson Room Weapon is, how it's impacted my gameplay this week. Uh, as I've, I have it crafted now, I've been using it on, this is a good week to use it, uh, Fortified, Spiteful, uh, Grievous, um, how I'm using it, uh, how good it is, and maybe some of the cons about using it, like what, where I'm finding that it's a little awkward to use or uh, things where things are overlapping and stuff like that. Um, and then also how it's changed my talent build as well. So basically... Let's, let's go over the Crimson Room Weapon itself really quickly. Dancing Room Weapon uh, generates 5 Bone Shield charges when it activates, which is really nice. Go watch the other video of, uh, on me talking about this. When a Charger Bone Shield is consumed, the cooldown is reduced by 5 seconds of Dancing Room Weapon. And additionally, when you use Dancing Room Weapon, uh, when it fades, your Rune Regeneration Rate is increased by 40% for 10 seconds. So uh, let's talk a little bit about this uh, and why it's good. Uh, and, and why it's so great. So it's really great in the Mythic Plus dungeons. Uh, it's really good on those weeks where you don't have to kite so much. But why is it good? Um, it's good because it gives you Bone Shield charges right off the bat that you don't have to waste a global on. It's also good because now the Dancing Room Open is up basically every pack. It's up every 45 to 60 seconds from my experience in dungeons. And by having Dancing Room Open up, I've noticed that it's actually been about the same amount of damage, if not more. It's more of a DPS increase I feel than Super Strain. And uh, maybe somebody can correct me if I'm wrong on that, but having Dancing Room Weapon up, uh, just remember that Dancing Room Weapon is an offensive as much as it's a defensive ability. It's a really, really good cooldown, probably one of the strongest tank cooldowns in the game. But by having this up for every pack, basically, every 45 to 60 seconds, having it up two, maybe even sometimes three times on a boss, that's if the boss is up for really long. It's actually really powerful. It is a big uh, DPS increase because it doubles up your Blood Plague, mirrors your attacks, and you get your parry chance and bolsters your defenses. So that's why it's really good. I found that it's it's a little bit easier for me to uh, generate and keep threat. As you can see down here, this is just a hauls that we did. Obviously ignore the Stoneborn damage. So I averaged about 3.1k here in this dungeon uh, using this. In this Theater Pain 19, did about 3k. And and I know that's that's about average. And that's how much people were running and getting with the uh, with the super strain. But if we look at all this, it's it's looking like and this was 3.3k in, in a miss tuna. So it's doing just as uh, as much, if not a little bit more than super strain, in my opinion. With super strain, I was barely pulling like 2.8, 2.9. And on good dungeons where the, the group was coordinated, we were doing big pulls. It was over 3k, so about as much as we're doing here. Defensively you're really, really good into the pack. I've noticed uh, part of the reason why my DPS has increased is simply because I feel more tankier and I'm more confident and I don't have to kite as much because Dancing Room Open is up every pool that I do. Um, so that's another reason why your DPS will increase using this because you don't have to kite as much. When Dancing Room Open fades, obviously you can roll like a Vampiric Blood into it and a Swarming Mist after that and then an IBF or Lichborn if you're running the Hardened Bones conduit. So you can stay in the pack. You know, Obviously you can tank stuff. But having Dancing Room Open up every every pool gives you more confidence and it gives you an extra cooldown every single pack. And that's going to give you more damage because you can stay into a pack for a longer period of time without kiting. So now that we know how strong it is and what it does, and we know how long it's up, 45 to 60 seconds, we know that's going to basically be up every pack. So how do you want to use this Legendary? Um, well, like I said, sometimes it's up two, sometimes three times on a boss fight. Normally it's up just two. Um, and if you use it right, but how do you use this legendary? You use it going into every pack and you ideally want to have it up going into every pack. That's when you're the most vulnerable. That's when you need the, the most damage and the most threat generation. Um, and you want to pop it on packs that have, I would say over 50% health, um, and ideally on a fresh pack every time. 
you don't really want to pop this on a pack that's about to die. The whole beauty behind this legendary is having your bone shield charges be consumed. And you can't do that if you're not tanking and things are going to die. So if you pop it on stuff that's like sub 50%, um, then you're not going to get much value. You're not going to have dance room open up going into the next pack because you, you're not actively tanking. You're not losing bone shield charges. So it's probably best that you kind of just uh, refresh your bone shield on its own and, and do your best to use a different cooldown so that you can just have dance room open going into another cooldown. Uh, into another pack, sorry, not another cooldown. Um, so that's kind of when you want to use it. Now, the one kind of awkward awkward uh, thing that I found about this and the con to it, and maybe this is a question you guys are having, hopefully this answers the question, is it gives you five bone shield charges, and you're probably thinking, John, um, if it gives me five bone shield charges, does that mean I don't want to overcap on bone shield? Well, of course you never want to overcap on bone shield, right? But you don't ever actively actively want to overcap on bone shield. Um, from my experience, running with this legendary, and, and and basically let me break down that question a little bit more before I go into it, is overcapping meaning I have six or seven or eight bone shield charges, and I have dancing room open up going into a pack. You know, do I use it? Well, of course you want to use it. That's a, that's a simple answer. Uh, because again, that's when you're going to be most vulnerable. Now, why would you ever be at six, seven, or eight bone shield charges when a pack dies going into a fresh pack? Well, if you if you know Blood DK and if you've watched Blood DK guides from you know Dark Mech or Vera, uh, Dorky, you know there and, and and even myself and I've told other people is you always want to make sure you have refresh your bone shield charges while the pack is dying so you have bone shield charge going into the new pack. Ideally, that's what you want to do. Um, and so in my head, being the DK that I am, I'm still kind of ingrained into refreshing my bone shield charges as a pack dies and going into a new pack. So I'm, I'm sometimes going into a pack with six or seven, maybe even eight bone shield charges, sometimes even more. Um, and I have dancing room open up. It's a fresh pack. Do you pop it or not on pool? And my answer would be, and you guys can correct me or discuss down below in the comment section. My answer would be yes. You want to pop it because you want to start damaging. You want to start getting some threat. And the thing is, I don't feel like you're going to lose out too much because you're not actually using any runes to pop Dancing Room up in and to get that five bone shield charges. Ideally, you want to pop it when you're around five, maybe four uh, bone shield charges. But I'm here to tell you by practicing this week and going through Mythic Plus keys, it's just not realistic to constantly let yourself go super low on bone shield using this legendary um, and and practicing that uh, that mentality of refreshing bone shield charges as packs are dying. Now, if you could break away from that, maybe I'm, it's a mentality thing of me breaking away from refreshing my bone shield charges. Uh, maybe it'll be more optimized and I'll have less bone shields going into the fresh pack so that I benefit from all five bone shield charges that the dancing room weapon gives me, crimson room weapon gives me. Um, but for now, uh, just pop it, use it. If you have six or seven bone shield charges, it's fine. Yes, you're going to overcap by one or two, meaning you're not going to benefit fully from the, the bone shield charges it gives. But I don't think that's the beauty of the dance of the Crimson Rump. And the beauty of it is just having it up for a fresh pack all the time. And having it up as soon as you can on a fresh pack is more ideal than waiting for your bone shield charges to drop and then having it up when the pack is about to die or at 50% health. And then when it fades, it's on like a minute and 45 second cooldown and you're having to really make sure that the mobs are hitting you and, and consuming your bone shield charges so it's up again before the next pack. So, you know, I think it's just more of a, a sense of reworking your mentality to be okay with letting your bone shield charges get low when a pack is dying so that you can pop dancing room up and get all five of the bone shield charges active on you going into the fresh pack. But if some of you guys are used to refreshing your bone shield charges as a pack's dying like I am, um, and you're getting seven or eight or six bone shield charges going into a fresh pack, I would just say use the dancing room open regardless, but it's something you're going to want to work on. So that's the only awkwardness or the con that I can say uh, about this, this dancing room open. But again, that's not really the beauty of it so much. Uh, it's the beauty of getting those five bone shield charges on dancing room open is for a cold opener. A cold opener meaning you're, you're just starting a dungeon. You don't have anything up. You don't have any bone shield charges. Uh, or if everything's faded off you, you have no root power, no bone shield charges. You guys are, you know, as a group moving through to another pack. Like let's say Theater of Pain kind of has some movement where you're you're most likely going to lose bone shield regardless on even if you refresh it on the last pack. 
So that's where the beauty of getting the five automatic bone shield charges comes from. But the second part of having it up all the time and then getting the rune regeneration is, is, is kind of the beauty of it. So now that we got that out of the way, uh, we talked about the pros and the cons and how it's working well. It's very good legendary. Um, again, if you haven't watched that video on uh, the patch 9.0.5 and maybe you're a little lost on some key points and context of what I'm talking about as why this legendary is good, then you should definitely go watch the video. Uh, but let's talk now right about my legend, uh, my, my talent choices. My talent choices prior to Crimson Rune Weapon was this. Heartbreaker, Hemostasis, Blood Tap, Will and Necropolis, Grip of the Dead, Voracious, and Red Curse. This was my push uh, talent build for keys back when it was super strain. And now that I am now, now you were also seeing guys like Dorky and now Vera and other guys that were getting into high, higher keys like 20s, 21s, 22s. When they were under geared, they were running foul bulwark. They were doing that because they needed the extra health pool so that they can react with the death strike and their healers can react to heal them. So they had a larger health pool. But most of us with, uh, you know, not like just difficult content, not like extremely difficult content, we're running blood tap because blood tap uh, turned into a DPS and healing increase. But now that we have this Crimson Rune weapon where we're, ha we're getting to save our, our two runes on the, not having a marrow Ren with the Dancing Rune weapon up and with this coming up so often, you're getting five free bone shield charges basically every 45 to 60 seconds. You're, I'm finding it that I'm not getting as rune starved as I used to be. And it makes sense, right? So instead of going blood tap, even if you're not doing hard, difficult content like the 22s and 23s, and you're running this legendary, I would still recommend Foul Bulwark because it's not necessarily about the fact that you can't survive the content. It's just simply you're not going to really benefit as much from the blood tap. Now, the second part to this is the last part of this uh, legendary, which is when rune weapon fades, your rune regeneration rate is increased by 40% for 10 seconds. And again, that's every 45 to 60 seconds when you know the dance room opens up and then it fades. You're getting that rune regeneration for a full 10 seconds. That's big uh, rune regeneration. So off, uh, that's basically how it's changed my talent build. And that that's basically it. Uh, it's just this one talent row that I would choose Foul Bulwark over Blood Tap when you run this legendary. That's my suggestion um, from my my point of view and my, my pushing. Now, um, let's say you aren't pushing something super hard content. Um, you can argue the fact that Super Strain maybe does a little bit more damage. Uh, if you're doing really, really big pools uh, and you're doing something super easy for your item level. Let's say for me, 224, I'm pushing 20 and 21s. Uh, hopefully 21s and 22s by the end of this week, please. <laughs> uh, but for me, easy content would be like a 14 or a 13 or anything below like a 15, maybe even a 15. Uh, maybe I go with super strain. And if I go super strain, I go back to blood tap. So if you're running this legendary, go foul bulwark. If you're not running this legendary, if you're running super strain, blood taps probably better because you're not getting that rune regeneration. You're not getting the five bone shield charges, which means you're spending two runes on marrow rend. So. That's how my talent build is set up based off of this uh, uh, legendary choice. Conduits haven't changed. Uh, itemization really hasn't changed. Actually, itemization has slightly changed. Uh, critical strike isn't necessarily going to be... It's, it's a little devalued now, critical strike. Uh, I know that all stats are good for you and everyone's stressing item level, and that's still the case. But critical strike doesn't become as powerful anymore running this legendary because critical strike increases your parry chance. And because, you know, Dancing Rumping gives you 40% parry chance when it's up, and it's up like all the time going into a pack, critical strike doesn't seem as valuable anymore running this legendary because your Dancing Room weapon is gonna do all the parrying for you. And so critical strike loses a little bit of value running this legendary. So just so you guys know, haste and versatility is definitely what you wanna stack running this legendary if you can. Item level is still king. Stamina, strength is still king. Uh, but if you can avoid critical strike with this legendary, I would probably avoid critical strike. I would go for more haste and versatility, mastery, and uh, all that other stuff. And I, I think that's it, honestly. Uh, that's all I wanted to talk about. I want to let you guys know that Crimson Rune Open has been 
an amazing legendary. I'm so, so glad that we have a better legendary, well, better legendary, something different that we can use, something a little bit more exciting, uh, something that works within our rotation. So Blizzard, thank you so much for making this legendary. Everyone else is excited about this legendary. I'm excited too, um, but I think that just about covers it. If you guys haven't hit that thumbs up, please, I appreciate any support you guys give. Give that, give the video a thumbs up. Got a lot of great support from you guys. A lot of good new subs. Uh, comment section, uh, use that as well for discussion. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, I love the discussion that we had in the previous video. I want to keep this channel being more about Blood DK discussion. I constantly upload videos of timed runs that I do and other things I do on stream and Blood DK content. So please. Uh, Open up the discussion down in the comments. If you kind of want to debate some things, I'm definitely open for it. I'm an open-minded person. Uh, if you're excited as I am, or if you find anything else you want to discuss, if you have any questions, comment down below. Hit the subscribe button, guys. It is a big goal of mine to hit 1,000 subs, and I would appreciate any sub that you guys have. Uh, I definitely want to keep growing this channel, and I appreciate all you guys' support. If you want to talk to me openly and live, I do stream on Twitch. Link is down in the description below. So I stream Tuesday, Wednesday raid. Thursday night for pushing Mythic Plus or Community Keys if it's not a push week. And then Saturday morning from 10 to 2 p.m. 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Pacific time. Saturdays is viewer keys. You guys can stop by. You guys can chat with me, discuss uh, Blood DK content or any other tank questions you guys have. Um, but for now, I appreciate you guys' support. Let's talk about this. Let's discuss it. Let's get excited about the Blood DK. And hopefully we'll see some more changes to our damage later down the road. Please, Blizzard. And uh, I'll catch you guys in that next video. Take care.